Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a warm welcome to our presentation about how to improve the performance of flotation cells. But before we come to the topic uh, of the improvement uh, of flotation cells, I would like to give you a short overview uh, about the company Festo. You can see here Festo is a German-based family-owned company and we had last year, and this gives you a certain indication about the size, uh, 3 billion in sales. Uh, we employ uh, 20,000 colleagues around the world and also we are represented with own companies in 62 countries. So we are all over the world. We are also available where you are and can serve you uh, as an operator. What we are very proud of uh, are two topics. 8% uh, of our sales we spend in R&D. This is one thing because we also think we have to train our people to get the best technology. And the other topic is uh, our 56,000 customers uh, in Didactic. Didactic is a company uh, which um, provides learning systems as well as consulting services to the market. Why are we doing this? Uh, we do this because we think the best yield you get out of a plant, if you have on one side uh, best technology available, but on the other side, also excellent trained people. Both together bring, bring the best yield in a plant. I would like to come now to the topic how to uh, increase the performance of flotation cells, and I would like to start uh, with a paradigm shift from our point of view uh, in the industry. You see here uh, on this slide uh, several flotation cells as well as one hydrocyclone. And uh, on top you see uh, the usual uh, part of the automation pyramid for the automation of these kind of individual production modules. What will be the future from our point of view? The future will be that the automation technology goes down, uh, will be decentralized uh, and uh, will run independently the individual uh, process modules, uh, the uh, individual production steps. Uh, why this is of importance, uh, this is one thing. You have more flexibility, you can exchange, for example, one module to another module, might be not so interesting for the mining industry, but on the other side, you will also get the opportunity uh, to have artificial intelligence tools directly installed on site on the shop floor, and we will come later on in our presentation to the advantages what you can achieve for your production. What is new here? Uh, and with this, I would like to show you here the working group defining the standards for communication. This is, let's say it in this way, the who is who of the chemical pharmaceutical industry, Bayer, BASF, Merck, and so on. Uh, they sit together, but also with the OEMs. Uh, in this case, uh, GIA is one OEM, and also Autotech, Mezzo Autotech, was part of this working group. It gives you also a clear indication that this is not only relevant for the chemical pharmaceutical industry, this is also relevant for the minerals processing industry or the heavy industry. But the operator OEMs uh, are one side. Of course, also uh, the supplier uh, sit on the table. Uh, the, <laughs> I want to say, the big guys like Siemens, ABB, Schneider, Electric, Amazon, but also the sensor suppliers like Andersenhauser, Grone, and we as Festo, for example, are part of this group. And what did this group do? This group defined communication standards and uh, data transfer standards during the engineering phase, but also during the operation phase uh, of a plant. Means, if you have modules equipped, uh, and I will take now uh, a Festo PLC, uh, this module can seamlessly be integrated into a Siemens superior system, ABB, Schneider, Amazon system, because in the engineering phase, as well as during the operation, uh, standards are defined. OPC UA, for example, for the online data exchange, uh, or automation and uh, ML in the engineering phase. With this, we are pretty sure, we are all together, uh, that this standard will have acceptance in the market. And the motivation for the operators, more flexibility, I mentioned already, uh, but increased competitiveness by reduced investments, of course, uh, the expectation is to get an economy of scale of the modules. Reduced engineering and system integration by this standardization of the communication, uh, we are faster and also, of course, reduce time to market. And the OEMs also, again, increase competitiveness in sourcing the PLC. Now the OEM has the freedom to choice the PLC, to 
to, to, to select the PLC. And also his employees are trained for this PLC. There is no need to have trained people for ABB, Schneider, Amazon PLCs. Only one PLC and of course this reduces costs uh, and, uh, and effort. And um, where are we now? And now we come to the topic uh, in more life uh, with our dynamic display here. Uh, where are you now? Where are we now? Looking here, we have on the x-axis the time and we have on the y-axis added value of solutions. On the left side you see, let's say, the more old and traditional automation of flotation cells. Means we have one linear actuator for operating the dart valves and we have external devices for the position measuring. These external devices are moving and in a an harsh environment everybody knows that this is a problem. There is a certain need for recalibration and recalibration is also equal to loss of productivity. So uh, what did we do? Uh, we developed one um, um, special um, actuator, the DFPI, and there are no moving parts outside. Just connect compressed air, just connect power supply, uh, as well as a set point signal and run. The example or the result you can see here above on the left side, uh, a volatile set point setting as well as level in the vessels. Here is smooth operation and of course smooth operation is always uh, equal to uh, improved productivity. Then uh, the next step uh, which uh, will be uh, presented later on uh, is directly decentralized automation with a PLC near to the vessel. Here, this gives us the opportunity to install also additional tools for performance monitoring, like artificial intelligence. Again, later on, we will discuss this in detail. And of course, uh, you can have these kind of uh, pneumatic actuation also replaced or, uh, yeah, replaced or let's say in new plants uh, invested in electric. Uh, in electric automations with electric actuators. So we as FESO are able to provide both technologies to have the freedom uh, of choice uh, for our customers and also to get the best solution uh, for our customers. And with this, let's say, presentation here uh, uh, showing the new features, I would like to hand over now to Thomas and Thomas will explain now here using the hardware uh, what is behind that and what we really can show here. Thank you very much, Eckhart, for this introduction. With this display, we are simulating a complete flotation cell bank like you have it in uh, mining operations. Starting now with the simulation of a, a superior control system with the screen and on the lower part here also an air, prepar air preparation unit. By the way, just on a quick side note, this is not just the air preparation unit. We have also a digitized module included here in order to monitor the pressure consumption, but also the air consumption. Then, uh, as introduced already before by Eckhart, our uh, DFPI series, where we addressed all the uh, critical points, like Eckhart mentioned before, we have an inbuilt positioner and also an embedded position encoder means no uh, external moving components anymore. Two brand new products I would like to highlight uh, are first our smart positioner series CMSH. This two-wire technology positioner with a robust uh, body, aluminum die cast housing, and also an extreme high flow rate brings more values, additional values to mining applications. But you see here, we have still some external piping, some external fittings, and typically also when we think on more accessories like filter regulators or um, booster valves. All installations are done typically with rigid piping or tubing, means external components which are potentially failure sources. And of course installation and uh, commissioning, commissioning is complicated and time consuming. With our second brand new product, the VTOP, we are avoiding additional efforts in installation, but also reducing the number of external piping and fitting. You see here, we can expand the actuator package modularly by adding 
a filter regulator like we have it here or a booster valve to it and also the positioner is connected to the linear actuator directly without any piping or fitting. That makes it a extreme sturdy and robust solution for specifically mining applications, flotation cells, and increase directly the uptime of your application of your plant. Last but not least, uh, I would also like to introduce the control with the CPX MPA terminal to you, and that goes directly in the, the direction of modular automation, what was introduced already before. We have here the CPX valve terminal with included controller, means we have the program and everything done on locally on the application and everything is controlled from here. We have also, you see it below, um, pressure vessel, which fulfills the fail-safe functionality and that is also included in the valve terminal and on the PLC. The two actuators you see here on the top are the standard DFPI actuators, of course with no positioner included, but again with the embedded position encoder. And the HMI, what you see here as well, we have a visualization uh, to show directly on the equipment the situation, the status of the uh, application and also giving the opportunity to bring failure alerts directly on the equipment. With that, I would like to hand over to Eckhart again to introduce artificial intelligence to us. Okay, thank you, Thomas, for the introduction of artificial intelligence. Uh, I will take now the opportunity to talk about artificial intelligence, or let's say it in this way, mostly machine learning as part of artificial intelligence. Where can you install these kind of tools for monitoring the production process? You can install it on Edge, you can install it in the cloud, and you can install it, for example, for a complete site uh, on premise. This, of course, depends on uh, what you would like to do. Uh, for example, if you want to, let's say, compare uh, and detect the best uh, practice uh, of your production plants globally, then of course you take the data into the cloud and analyze the data in the cloud. But if you want to uh, monitor the performance of a rotation cell on site, then of course it doesn't make sense to bring the data in the cloud. Then the, these kind of tools should be installed directly near to the process, uh, also to avoid uh, a lot of data transfer and so on. Important is also uh, that by installing these kind of tools, there is no additional programming, no additional engineering necessary based on, let's say, a set of data representing the healthy status of a plant. Uh, you can easily detect then abnormal behavior and uh, abnormal behavior uh, in data is really an indication that something has changed in the process. Thomas will give us now a very impressive example how to monitor uh, changes uh, and detect problems uh, in plant operation. For that I switched already the screen here uh, showing, uh, let's say, a demo of a production plant, in this case flotation cells. And Thomas, we are looking forward uh, to your presentation. Thank you, Eckhart. On this display, we are simulating uh, operating flotation cell without any failure, without any uh, interruption. The flotation cell is um, on a level uh, like the set point is set and it uh, constantly keeps the level on this, on this specific value. What we will do now, we are simulating that a rock is blocking the valve seat and uh, our actuator is not able to bring the dart valve in a fully closed position. For that, I will completely close the dart valves now. And the system, the CPX terminal, uh, will compare different parameters now, like the pressure in the actuator chambers, but also the position signal itself, and detects that the dart valve is not completely in the end position where it should be, and offers uh, alert on the module itself, but also in the superior system, like you see on the, on the big screen here. Thank you, Thomas, for this impressive example. Uh, a rock uh, here detection 
This will improve uh, the commissioning phase, of course, but also gives indications that something is wrong uh, during the operation. And uh, this is not the only example. There are other examples where you can detect uh, changes in the process by monitoring data. For example, in this case, we monitor and we combine uh, pressure measurement with position measurement, and this can give us also uh, indications for other topics. For example, uh, if uh, the speed is different uh, to a reference case, then you can also clearly say something is changing. And these kind of indications are the basis for the implementation of predictive maintenance concepts. And predictive maintenance always means to avoid unplanned shutdowns. And unplanned shutdowns avoiding, this means on the other side higher productivity and increased performance. Hopefully we, can, uh, we could give you uh, a good overview about modern technology, uh, what is new, what might become a paradigm shift in automation, the modular plant concept on one side, to bring down artificial intelligence concepts to the field and based on that, the foundation for implementing predictive maintenance with all the performance improvements.